everyone, it's Emily and welcome to my channel. Today I'm building a tiny house and this was inspired by the, um, what's it called? The Opposite Twins create a sim fad that happened like months ago that I'm super late to. But anyway, I recently discovered it somehow. I don't know how I missed it, but I did. And I made these, or I had this idea of kind of like what would be an opposite twins create a sim that's like not super stereotypical. And I don't know if anyone's done this before because I haven't really looked into it that much. I just saw, I was, I found some new people on YouTube recently and like going through their old videos, I saw that they had done opposite twins things like months ago. And I was like, that's an interesting concept. And I came up with this idea kind of from two activities that I'm interested in. And then I just kind of bumped it up a notch and made it a whole opposite twins thing. But I am, I guess I wouldn't say that I'm outdoorsy per se, but I do like hiking and nature stuff. So I feel like outdoorsy requires some kind of skill to claim that you're outdoorsy, but like you can be, you can like nature and not be out outdoorsy per se, if that makes sense. So I, I guess I, um, I enjoy nature, but maybe not the most outdoorsy because bugs kind of freak me out a little bit. But I also like playing games and I can sit at my PC all day and be totally fine and never go outside and I, I'll be okay <laughs> that day. But I can also not play games for like days and do nature things and be fine with that as well. So I took that idea and I wasn't originally going to make a creative sim, but then I decided to make one. So if you want to stay tuned for that, make sure to subscribe. That'll be up on my channel in a few days. I think it might be up the day after this, but I'm not totally sure. Um, yeah, we'll see. If not, it'll be in a few days. And I also made a girly gamer apartment. So if you want to check that out, that's on my channel already. That's definitely been posted before this. So yeah, you can check that out after this if you're interested and haven't seen it yet. And if you haven't, then you might not be subscribed. So you should. <laughs> oh gosh. Um, but yeah, so I came up with that and I was just kind of going to use that idea to base some builds off of because it's so much more fun for me to build when I have a character in mind. I feel like the house just ends up having more personality when I actually have a personality to envision while I'm building the house. So I um, I thought that that would make for some interesting builds or at least two interesting builds and then maybe kind of inspire some rooms in other family houses or something. But yeah, then I decided I'll just go ahead and make a create a sim too. So yeah, that'll be up. And this is the kind of tomboy-esque sim. She's not even that tomboy-y. I just created her before I recorded this voiceover thing. I, I made the house first and then I did the create a sim this morning. I'm recording this at like 11 a.m. and now I'm doing the voiceover. But yeah, she's not even like overly like a tomboy sim because I really didn't want it to be like a stereotypical super polar opposite twins. But I I did kind of take inspiration from that challenge, I guess, to come up with their personalities in the first place. So I, um, I made this house for her and I imagine that she has a dog. So she ends up having a like outdoor space and she lives by the beach in Brindleton Bay because, you know, Brindleton Bay is the, is the place for people who love their pets and want to do all kinds of activities with their pets. So I thought that, you know, since I like building in Brindleton Bay so much, why is, uh, might as well do it for this too. And I decided to do this kind of interesting thing with the fences. I've seen other people do it too, but most recently I think I saw Kiwi Simming do it and that's where I got this idea to do it for from. I don't know, but it's like the fence is kind of open, like the gates open, um, because I felt like she wouldn't be the type of person that would be too bothered about her security. Like she kind of lives not in the middle of nowhere because she lives right next to the beach, but I don't think she's too concerned about someone trying to snatch her things. <laughs> so she would probably just leave the gate open. She probably has a big dog that's uh, very loyal and likes to stay close to her. So she's not worried about her dog getting out of the yard or anything like that either. And yeah, I really liked how this backyard area turned out and just how the whole outdoor situation of this house turned out in general. Sometimes I really hate the landscaping, but this house, I actually, we get into the landscaping in a second. Yeah, now we're doing the landscaping. And I usually leave the landscaping till the very end. I will build the house, do the floor plan, furnish it, all that stuff. And then by that time, I'm 
you're tired. I don't want to do the landscaping. It's not my favorite thing to do with most houses. And I just feel like I have to do it. And I'm never totally happy with it. But this one, it turned out really well. And I think part of that was because I built the house, took a break, did the floor plan, and then I did the landscaping. And then I was able to furnish the house and have fun with that and not worry about the landscaping hanging over my head. And also with this house, there's so many trees around here. Ooh, I think I left the trees until the very end though, which is fine because it is easier to build when you don't have a bunch of trees around your house. But I did all of this fun overgrown landscaping in the meantime, and oh, it was so much fun to do. I don't do landscaping like that too often just because a lot of the things that I do, I do a lot of um, I do apartments probably once or twice a week, and then I do family homes once a week and uh, some smaller houses, but they're usually kind of like traditional houses, I guess. They're not supposed to be like unkempt, kind of like this one is, but this was so much fun because it was just such a different landscaping than I would usually do. And uh, I just liked it a lot. I liked putting this little pond thing in on the side here. I thought about going crazier with that. Once I saw the other landscaping that I had done with the house, I was like, oh, we have to have some kind of water feature. She's near the beach and it would just be cool with all this overgrown stuff. But I wish that I, if I had planned that a little bit more, I probably would have done some more of that. Ooh, we are doing all the trees now. Fun. Um, I also really liked, I use so many different trees and I usually, especially recently, I've just been using the trees from cats and dogs because I like them so much and the base game trees are pretty good, but I kind of use just the regular base game trees that show up in Willow Creek a lot. I don't use too many other trees than that, but I use lots of different ones in this house. And yeah, I don't know. I feel like it made for a good thumbnail and just a good showcase of the house, especially since it is kind of in a foresty area of Brindleton Bay. I thought that adding some extra trees to the lot just made it all come together. And something about this lot in particular that I'm building on is that I... um. I build on it a lot <laughs> now that Cats and Dogs is out, and I love br building in Brindleton Bay, and I also really like how the ocean is kind of in the background of this house, but or this lot, I guess, and I have been, so I've been building lots of houses here, and some of them have been kind of bigger houses, and they don't have a lot of room for landscaping, because this is like a 20 by 20 lot, I want to say, and if I build a big-ish house on it, there's like zero room for landscaping, like it's just the house on a lot, but Something that I do like about the surrounding area is it is pretty well filled in, so you don't feel like your house is just sitting on an empty plot of grass if you don't do too much landscaping. So that's really nice. If you have cats and dogs and you want to start building your own houses or maybe you um, you renovate some houses and download them, but the landscaping just doesn't look quite right, you don't know how to fix it. Honestly, if it's small enough to fit on this lot, you don't really need that much landscaping because of the surrounding area. So yeah, that's just a little fun thing that I have kind of discovered from building on this lot many times. <laughs> But now we are moving. Oh, the kitchen is super small. This is probably the smallest. This I know for a fact that this is the smallest kitchen you can possibly make in Sims. One counter, the fridge, a stove, and then we have our sink that's in the bathroom. I didn't think she needed another sink because she probably lives here by herself in my mind. And even if she lived with one other person, it's such a small house. The sink is right around the corner through a door. It's not like a far trek to get to a sink. So I didn't really bother with that. And yeah, I made use of the wall space for her storage. And I put in those cabinets and stuff just to make it kind of realistic. I tried to use lots of clutter items that signified places she would have, she would have storage and stuff. Um, like you'll see when we get to her desk area, I use some clutter like filing the box things because she doesn't have a bookshelf so I felt like she would have to have some place to keep documents and just like books and things you know so we did that and ooh, also this trying to get this chair where I wanted it was a little bit of a struggle but we got there and I thought it was nice to have a third chair just in case she had more people over but it seemed like having I don't know having a table with one chair is just really sad to me. So I always have to put at least two. And having the three chairs on a table with it pushed up against the wall is also kind of weird to me. So I put the third chair 
kind of like to the side, you know, I think you, you get what I'm saying, but I also use some curtains. I just, I'm talking about things after they happen, but it's fine. I used some curtains and mismatched them by the front door, which was fun. I never used that color swatch of those curtains. So I like doing that. And I also haven't used that green color swatch of that bay window seat, I don't think. So yeah, that was a little bit of fun. And I liked putting these lanterns next to her kind of old computer. I didn't want to use the cheapest computer in the game because I felt like, I don't know, it didn't look quite right for this like apartment, but or not this apartment. Oh my God. I've been building too many apartments for this house, but I felt like this one looked a little bit older than the other ones. It's kind of like the retro one. I think you get it from getting to a certain level of the writing career, but yeah, I just felt like it fit better overall with kind of the lack of technology in this house. We do manage to get a TV in. We use the really small one from Get to Work and put it on that wall right there. Yep. And she can watch TV. She can go on the computer, connect with people, but that's not super important to her. She would probably just use that TV to like watch movies when she has friends over is kind of what I was thinking. And I also layered a bunch of rugs because I felt like since this is like a wood stone cabin type of thing, and um, she's just kind of living out here by the beach. She would probably want to be a little bit cozy and all of her furniture is kind of mismatched. So I felt like the rugs would kind of go along with that, like things that she's gotten from friends that maybe were moving and wanted to get new stuff. And she was like, oh, I'll take that rug, you know, because she could always use an extra rug. Why not? I, I think that's kind of the vibe of a lot of her furniture is like not stuff that she's gotten herself, but like this bed could be like reclaimed wood maybe that she fashioned herself into a headboard and that type of thing. That's what I was thinking for her character. And ooh, I should have gotten her a woodworking table. That would have been nice. You can always pop one out there in the back if you decide to play in this house and you have a similar sim in mind. But ooh, we also got that outdoor shower. I did that earlier, but didn't really mention it. And I was when I was trying to figure out the floor plan, I was like, where am I going to put this stupid shower or bathtub or whatever? Oh man, I forgot a bathtub because she's going to have a dog. Well, in my mind, she was having a dog, but yeah, I didn't put a bathtub. Sorry about that. The video is over. I hope that you enjoyed. Hope you enjoyed the screenshots. And yeah, make sure to subscribe if you're not already. Thanks for watching. Bye.